Well, when you see that map, it's almost unbelievable. It, it still is for me when I look at it today because you can see how the entire country almost was covered, layer upon layer upon layer of bombs. And those bombs still come up from the ground today. And so, Jerry, can you talk about what the effects are on uh, people today? Your story tells—your uh, book tells the story of uh, a woman named Ta. You tell a number of stories. One of them is of a woman named Ta and her dead son, Bunyan. Can you talk about that story and how representative it is of the hundreds of people you spoke to who are still suffering the effects of this bombing campaign? That, that was a particularly astonishingly sad story. Um, it's a very that <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> that happened in a particularly poor part of the country, again close to the Vietnamese border, at an entry point for the Ho Chi Minh Trail coming into Laos. So it was extremely heavily bombed, and the people there are very poor farmers. And essentially, the second crop during the year that they have is to go out and collect bomb scrap, either intact bombs or shrapnel from exploded bombs. And then they trade this for money, essentially, and that scrap metal goes into various other products, you know, for like rebar or spoons or things like that. Um, but her son, as far as we could tell um, from people who survived, he and a couple other people had found some sort of bomb they didn't recognize and were digging it up when it exploded and essentially wiped him and at least two other people out completely. And everybody in this village knew the dangers of this sort of thing. People from this village had been killed regularly for years, but they still went out to try to collect it because they were so heavily impoverished. It was just, it was really a terrible story. But I want, unfortunately, not the only story like that. 